Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. Here we have the Galaxy S21 Ultra, S22 Ultra, and uh, S23 Ultra. And uh, more interestingly, you see here we have both the Exynos and the Snapdragon variant for the S21 Ultra and S22 Ultra. But apparently we know that for S23 Ultra, there is only Snapdragon. So today we are going to compare the performance as well as sustained performance or stability of these five devices with five different SOCs. The room temperature will be kept at 25 degrees and I will make sure that each device are properly cooled down in between each test. So they start from fresh and we'll see how they perform against each other. Okay, our first test will be N22 and uh, let's go. Okay, for N22 test result, we see that uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 on S23 Ultra is a huge step upwards from all the other predecessors. But uh, another interesting thing is that uh, Exynos 2200 seems to be pretty slow and uh, there is almost no real improvement from the Exynos 2100. You see they score almost the same. And then for the Snapdragon 888 to 8 Gen 1, there is a small performance improvement. Okay, so our next test will be Geekbench. And before we start, I want to show you that they all have been cooled down to near room temperature. Okay, let's start. Here with Geekbench 5, we see a similar scenario where all the four devices before the S23 Ultra, which means the S21 Ultra and S22 Ultra of both Snapdragon and Exynos, they seem to perform quite similarly to each other, which means the generational improvement was pretty minimal. But if you look at the S23 Ultra with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, there is a huge leap in performance, both for single core and multi-core. So if you've been holding off your device upgrade, Maybe you can seriously consider it this year. Our next test will be GFX Bench. This is a GPU test. We'll choose two of the more commonly used tests in this software because there are just too many tests in it and uh, it doesn't make sense to run everything. Okay, let's go. Okay, now the GFX Bench has finished. Just look at the scores. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 completely destroys all other four devices. It's also pretty sad to see that the Exynos 2200 even performs worse than the last generation Snapdragon 888 in some of the tests. And in general, it's just overall much slower than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 counterpart. This is exactly the reason why you see all the European users are so happy that this year they don't have the Exynos anymore. But I mean, oh my god, just look at the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's such a huge leap in terms of GPU performance. Our last uh, benchmark test before we move on to the stress test will be 3D Mark. And uh, of course, we'll be using the Wildlife Extreme here. And uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, so for this test, one interesting thing that I noticed is that for the Exynos 2200, although it's much slower than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it also stays a little bit cooler. But again, in this GPU test, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 on Galaxy S23 Ultra completely destroys all other four devices. The best performer before the S23 Ultra was the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, S22 Ultra, yet the S23 Ultra is still about 50% faster than it. And if we are looking at even older devices like the S21 Ultra variants, we are basically seeing more than double the performance. So this is crazy. Next, let's move on to our GPU stress test. If you've been following my Twitter or YouTube, you know that I keep emphasizing the importance of sustained performance because if you can score even 10,000 points, but uh, there is throttle that kicks in after 10 seconds. It doesn't make any sense, right? So we'll need to see how much, how well these devices perform on their sustained load. And our 3D Mark stress test is a very good tool to benchmark this. 
Okay, so it will last 20 minutes. Let's fast forward. Now the stress test has almost finished and let's measure the temperatures first. But at the same time, I also want to point out, you can notice the S23 Ultra is still running the benchmark smoothly, while all other four devices have become extremely choppy. The FPS has dropped to something like maybe 5 to 10, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 S23 Ultra was still able to maintain about 15 FPS even for the last cycle. And that is proven by the scores. The crazy thing here is that the lowest loop score for the S23 Ultra is higher than the best loop score on the four other devices. Which means, yes, it does throttle. It throttles to about 68% of the peak performance after about 10 minutes. But even after the throttling, it's still giving you more than enough GPU performance for any game because we see that even after throttling, it's still faster than any of the last year flagship devices. That's really amazing. And I think TSMC and Samsung really did a good job here. Lastly, we'll do a CPU stress test. Basically, we'll be running multi-threaded workload on all these devices. You can see that I set the number of threads to 50, so it's a very high stress load. I'll set the benchmark time to 30 minutes. I think it will be more than enough. You won't be running any sustained load for more than 30 minutes. And uh, at the same time, fully stressing out the CPU on a mobile device, right? At least you shouldn't be doing that. So yeah, let's see how they perform. Okay, so that's our 30 minutes CPU stress test. Here we, we can see that the they all throttle a little bit, but as of now, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powered S23 Ultra is still giving the best performance. And you can also see that somewhat the throttling curve is a little bit more gentle, it's more uh, smooth, so you don't have any sudden huge drops, unlike the S21 Ultras and uh, the Exynos 2200 S22 Ultra. For the final score, it's not as exciting as GPU. We are not seeing double the performance, but it's still a healthy 20 to 40% performance improvement over the predecessors. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.